Right, ladies and gentlemen traders, recent studies show that the average conversion rate for a Forex landing page dropped from 5% in the recent years to only 2.3%. Along with the latest changes in global financial regulation, cryptocurrencies adoption, EFT's release, and more and more assets provided for traders, the Forex industry is also going through some well-deserved changes, I might say. These changes are meant to increase the productivity of the firms, prevent uh, staff burnout, and offer easy, transparent solutions for the new clients. Now, for this, I've invited one of the specialists in uh, artificial intelligence to join us today. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen traders, joining us live from one of the hottest places on earth, one of the pioneers in artificial intelligence for the financial sector, Dr. Zheje Gat, CEO at EBO Artificial Intelligence, entrepreneur, author, and public speaker. Zheje, thank you ever so much for uh, joining us uh, today. How are you, first of all? How are you handling the heat? Thank you, Andrew. Thank you for having me on your show. We're very energized to be working in the FX sector. Well, the heat. I'm not a summer person. I tend to work much better in a cooler climate. But you know what? It's great to be on an island. It's great to have the sea all around you. And it's great to have strolls with the family and perhaps, uh, you know, an ice cream or a book in this type of climate. And it's even better to have a big uh, air conditioning next to you, isn't it? <laughs> True. Right. Today we have a very interesting topic: uh, the changes in the in the forex industry. And I'm I'm very excited about this topic, as uh, as you know, and as uh, everyone else knows. I've been on the front line of the forex floors for ten long years. So I want to ask you: What are the latest trends, the latest changes that you've noticed in the uh, industries, Jeje? Andrew, there are two. I think the first is that customer experience has become so front and central for FX companies. You'll agree that the digital journeys of our customers are the real differentiators, right, today. So those FX companies that can craft the touch points to make effective digital journeys will win over loyalty. And winning over loyalty translates directly into revenue and into bottom line. The second key trend is this idea of adopting technology in a lean way. And gone are the days where FX companies have months and years to realize the benefits of technology. We need short projects, easy to adopt, easy to roll out, and quick to provide return on investment. These are the key trends. Yes, very nicely said. Uh, and also, if uh, some CEOs will be a bit more open to adapt to uh, the new trends, I'm sure the transition will be much uh, smoother. Now, this being said, I know you're in contact with a lot of Forex uh, firms on a daily basis. What are they struggling with uh, the most, JJ? Because when I ask them, they don't want to tell me. What is it? Staff retention, client onboarding, client conversion. Which one is it? Well, it's hard for most CEOs to admit, but I think the central issue is the burnout, right? Uh, we have customer service managers on the front line. We have HR managers. We have traders who are burnt out. They are tired from the relentless cycle of hiring new staff, passing on the knowledge, retention, replacement, and start again. I think that this model is intrinsically broken. Right? So we see customer service team members on the front line who have an FX client orientation that feel the need for relief. They feel the need that they need to compete in a complex market, but don't have the right tools. I think the second biggest challenge that we hear from CEOs is the concept of using data. So we know that FX companies capture a lot of data, right? But very often it becomes dusty. It remains in some type of CRM. How do you operationalize that data, Andrew? How do you bring it to the front line? How can you in real time change the tone, the pulse, the trajectory of an interaction with the customer based on the siloed data? So these two areas, burnout relief and data, is what CEOs complain most to us about. Yes, I'm with you on both when it comes to burnout and also when it comes to, uh, to data. How could they adapt to the new uh, market trends? Uh, what do clients, for example, expect from a trade firm nowadays? 
That's such a good question, Andrew. I think it all starts off with this concept of automation, which is a principle that artificial intelligence is ushering in, right? So by using the latest automation tools, we can essentially reframe the notion of work. What does it mean to work in the FX sector today? So we can automate entire processes which are typically repetitive. Think of frontline customer service, onboarding, KYC, AML procedures. And subsequently, we can allow our human employees to focus on the FX challenges that really matter, right? That's where you need emotional intelligence, that's where you need human intelligence. I think the second way to adapt is to realize the cost competitiveness of the FX world today. It is the survival of the fittest. I think what this means in business terms is that we need to have lean structures. If an FX company cannot control its payroll, cannot control its process cost, then they're going to be in hot water. Yes, fair enough. Now, I know you're uh, one of the pioneers in uh, artificial intelligence. So let's take it one by one and see how artificial intelligence can help the clients and the firms in the same time. So let's start with a client, a newcomer that doesn't have much knowledge about trading, but has the will to participate on the markets. How could artificial intelligence make their uh, journey smooth and exciting in the same time? Well, first of all, 24-7 service. We still have a reality whereby most FX companies are not there to handhold their customers on a personal basis through the 24 hours of the day. I think that is a critically important change that AI brings in. The second is this concept of creating an omni-channel environment. So the customer coming into the FX market has no sense that this process needs to happen purely on a website. What if it happens on a messaging platform? What if it happens on email? There needs to be an AI-driven approach which brings all these channels which society has accepted into one trading platform, into one simple experience. Another advantage which AI can bring in to the customer coming in for the first time is the concept of language and localization. I mean, today, through AI, we support about 85 languages. Which FX company is actually serving a customer in 85 languages? This should be FX on the customer's um, time and language and culture and not the companies. And lastly, using data points, right? So when we get new customers coming into a platform, we want to assist or respond or even predict what they are likely to do next based on data which we see from similar customer cohorts. So it's all about the FX company being able to take the most relevant action, often predict the most relevant action to support the new customer coming into the business. Right. Are we talking about chatbots? Because I know most companies uh, have uh, implemented the uh, chatbots, uh, JJ. No, I think we should be talking about virtual agents. So chatbots are a slightly more immature legacy uh, product of artificial intelligence. We are talking about a cognitively capable virtual agent, which is almost indistinguishable from human brain who can handle compliance, who can handle consistency over time, and which creates a differentiator in the market. So by adopting virtual agents, the AI capabilities are increased. Right. Question though, does this mean that the human interaction will be forgotten 100% in the Forex firms? And writing in general, uh, the scope of artificial intelligence is not to replace humans, but to augment human capability. Men and machines are essentially good at very, very different things. People, Andrew, you and I, we have intentionality. We have creativity. We can make plans. We can figure out complicated solutions. But we are less good at making sense of huge amounts of data. But that is where machines, that is where AI comes in. It's not trying to replace that human agency, but it can excel at efficient data processing, at 24-7 consistency, right? It will struggle to make basic human judgments, but it could be very, very, very good for factual, repetitive consistency. 
I love the word uh, repetitive, not, as that is basically the work of, a, of an account manager. Right, now let's talk about the uh, how artificial intelligence can help the firm and most importantly, the workers in the front line, because that's where the most pressure is, on the sales floor. Yeah, and one of the most important parts in this job is the agent burnout. Yeah. I felt it, my colleagues felt it, and this is probably one of the hardest parts in being an account manager in the trading industry, because you get burned out at some uh, some point as it's one of the most stressful jobs and as you said it's a repetitive job yeah as i was saying in uh, one of my interviews so how can the artificial intelligence help the agent prevent the the agent burnout by using a chatbot again of course you're right andrew of course you felt the burnout so the first thing a virtual agent can do is increase the efficiency because the task load is not 100 percent on the human payroll but gets distributed to a workforce which is part artificial intelligence and part human and in a 24 7 always on market the expectations of our customers are much higher than they were 10 years ago, Andrew. So we need to ensure that our processes can match that level of expectation. So how does a virtual agent, how does AI help the company? Well, it lowers the operating cost, right? It reduces recruitment costs. It reduces the pain which is related to burnout. And I think in the FX segment specifically, we have seen these three key advantages. First, the reduction in customer attrition. If you manage the customer touch point well, you should have more loyalty and you should have less attrition. Secondly, we have seen an increase in customer satisfaction, right? Because there's a better duty of care towards the user. And lastly, and perhaps most importantly from a regulatory point of view, what we've seen is better compliance level because human bias is reduced. And that is one of the key advantages that AI can bring. Right, fair enough. And now I have more questions about this uh, topic because I'm, I'm one of the old school uh, guys. Yeah, when I started in the financial markets, we had a pen and the paper to, uh, to work with and that was it. How can the artificial intelligence help the company finally? Because um, you know how it goes. The CEOs tend to care more about numbers and the overall image than individuals. So let's take marketing, for example. After sales, marketing is the core of the business, as without exposure, you basically don't get clients. How can the artificial intelligence help increase client conversion and uh, reduce marketing cost, let's say? All right. So you mentioned CEOs are interested in numbers, but you know what? Oh, yeah. The two are not intrinsically separate. I would say they're very related, right? So economic success, which is CEO measured, staff well-being, customer experience, they're all facets of the same business challenge. And Andrew, do you know that 94% of FX customers say that they are annoyed by the communication and present engagement patterns with FX companies? I'm sure this doesn't surprise you, does it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I also know that uh, many times, like about 70% of, of clients lose yeah, on, on the financial markets. Exactly, right? So how can we prevent that? And which are these benefits that AI can bring to the company? Well, first of all, speed, right? There is no waiting time. There is no queue. There is no, we are not available for the next eight hours. Speak to us in the morning. This is a 24-7, always on, speedy, multi-platform um, structure, solution. Secondly, it's taking out the repetitive querying from the frontliners, right? So AI is much better at customer identification, which are the right customers for the right type of trading activities. AI is much better at listening, right? Because it could read so many data points, which humans typically can't capture, like sentiment, right? AI is much better at taking unbiased assessments about customers, right? There's no concept of fatigue at the end of a shift, which often occurs, right? And also AI is much better at pattern recognition, which is so important for marketing, which you touched on, Andrew, right? It gives traders proactive guidance by looking at all those different market signals in real time, which could be relevant to a customer from a particular cohort. And that's a beautiful recipe for marketing. Fair enough, fair enough. But I do have uh, another question and uh, it's, it's important and I'll tell you why. 
Will the use of artificial intelligence reduce the uh, the number of uh, employees? Because um, human interaction can't really be uh, replaced by any machine. Yeah. For example, many traders come to the markets with wrong expectations, yeah, or wrong uh, understanding of the markets. And part of the account manager's job is also to try and educate the client in terms of expectations and help them mitigate the risk as much as they can. Can uh, how can AI replace the the human factor to that extent, uh, Jeje? So it's interesting to note that the World Economic Forum said that by 2025, AI will create 97 million jobs, right? Data analysts, data scientists, machine learning specialists, and so on. But because of these roles, the general global economy will lose 85 million jobs, which are typically clerks administration secretaries and repetitive process uh, roles. But obviously there is a net gain. So AI is actually not reducing the workforce, but it is creating opportunities for a larger workforce, which is even more specialized. Now, Andrew, you asked this question about empathy, you know, about emotion, about handling difficult moments, which often occur on the trading floor. So what you're really talking about here is intuition, you know, consciousness, creativity, empathy. These are a very specific type of intelligence. Now, let's be clear. If intelligence means consciousness, empathy, then AI cannot deliver that. That is still the frontier of the human being. But yeah. if intelligence is expected to mean computation, algorithmic calculation, then there's no reason to believe that AI can't be as intelligent, if not more intelligent than human beings. And the gap, which I believe there is now between AI and humans, can never be shortened, can never be surpassed. However, from a business point of view, we need to focus on the 80-20 rule, Andrew, the Pareto principle, right? So what effort can a company do with AI today to solve 80% of the repetitive problems that it has? Very often, the areas which require emotional intelligence, that's the 20%. Leave humans do it. But the part which you could solve to bring back results, then do that today. Fair enough. And how do you deal with those CEOs uh, or those uh, sales managers that live under the impression that if the staff um, takes five minutes yet yeah, or reads an article, is not producing? Right. Uh, I think this is a culture thing, right? The beautiful thing about digital transformation, Andrew, is that it's not about technology. It's always about culture. It's about changing these perspectives about work, about employees, about efficiency, and moving to a more agile and modern world where we don't measure time, like you mentioned, but we measure outcomes, we measure effectiveness, we measure goals. Yeah, and it makes a lot of sense. Right. One last question, though, okay, which is the most complicated question of them all. As an account manager in a, in a Forex firm, you have a portfolio of clients, a database, which you stay in contact with on a daily basis, yeah, or very often, from a couple of times a week to three times a day in some cases. And inevitably, uh, you create a bond with, uh, with your client. So my question is, when the time comes to call your client and inform him or her that unfortunately due to situations out of anyone's control or a mistake on on their side they lost a quarter of a million dollars okay and they start crying over the phone and they tell you that was my child's tuition fund that was the college funds and you got to be there yeah as you said you got to empathize with him you got to you got to be there for them you can also tell them personal stories because we we all traded in the financial markets at least a few times yeah the ones that uh, work in the industry so you can empathize with the client you can tell him he's not alone and it's gonna it's gonna happen time to time and you shouldn't get discouraged how can the artificial intelligence handle that part uh Zheze? and would the client talk to siri about it or he would prefer to talk to a human Andrew, Hollywood depicts artificial intelligence in a very dystopian uh, fashion. Usually there are two models, right? It depicts AI as a sort of 
Terminator, uh, you know, robots are coming here to take over the world, or it tends to romanticize uh, this uh, this figure of AI, right? Like in the Ex uh, Machina movie, uh, the truth is more pragmatic, more simple, and somewhere more in the middle ground of this very strange depiction, right? AI will never be sufficiently empathetic with the customer to tell him or her that they've lost their pension or their tuition funds for their kids, but it is sufficiently capable of answering questions around, you know, why deposits have not gone through or why a KYC process has not occurred, right? So the former, when you're telling your customer they've lost half a million, should be happening in 1% of the time. But the sure. latter, the questions about KYC, the questions about deposits, the questions about transaction, that happens 90% of the time. AI should be focused on handling that 90% and never that 1% because humans are much better at that and that's how it should be. Right, okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> Thank you so much uh, for today. You did uh, answer indeed to some uh, some questions I had about uh, artificial intelligence. And uh, I told you at the beginning, when it comes to, to Forex and, and sales floors and um, and trading firms, I do strongly believe you need more humans than, than machines. But as you uh, mentioned a second ago, a machine can do the repetitive job, leaving the agents with their, with their mind focused on the real things that they should uh, they should do amazing interview today JJ. thank you ever so much for being with us today you've opened my eyes and hopefully other people's eyes regarding uh, artificial intelligence and i'm looking forward to the next one or why not a series 